The government may consider introducing a new law to deal with, to deal with deep fakes and misinformation. In fact, the IT ministry has called two meetings with executives of uh, social media firms on Thursday and Friday. Uh, companies such as Google and Meta are expected to participate in these meetings. Uh, a day after a viral fake video of Telugu actor Rashmika Mandana sparked concerns about misuse of artificial intelligence and its potential to further gender violence, the IT ministry had already cautioned social media platforms. In fact, the Prime Minister also spoke about the dangers of uh, deep fakes. But what are the challenges that deep fakes uh, pose and how can they be handled? My colleague Maria Shakil has this explaining. We are all on social media. We all use internet and this concerns all of us, you and me. A deep fake video of Southern superstar Rashmika Mandana has gone viral. The video shows a woman entering an elevator, but the face has been morphed to look like Rashmika with use of artificial intelligence. The viral fake video has sparked concerns about the misuse of AI and its potential to further gender violence online. Then there was this one, Katrina Kaif, another victim of deep fake. In Katrina Kaif's case, a digitally altered image of the actress from her upcoming film Tiger 3 surfaced online. While the original picture showed the Bollywood star fighting a stunt woman clad in a towel, the edited version showed her wearing a low cut white top and a matching bottom instead of the towel. Then we had Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagging the deep fake concerns. He revealed that there is a fake video of him performing Garba going around. The Prime Minister called the defakes a big crisis. Before getting into our debate over this important concern, let me try and break, down, break it down for you as to what really are defakes. These are digital media edits, manipulations using artificial intelligence tools. In other words, it is hyper-realistic digital falsification which makes a fake thing look as good as real. Easy access to technology algorithm has led to a deep fake epidemic on the internet and no one is safe, just no one. In these videos, faces are swapped using tech, AI to change the subject from original to intended. And it is not just videos, even audio files and images too are manipulated using AI tools. So the next obvious question is how to spot a deep fake from a real one. Look for unusual or unnatural features or movements in the video. Unnatural eye movement and lack of blinking is another giveaway. If the subject is not blinking at all or blinking in an unusual way, you should know it is fake. Also look out for any unnatural facial features and expressions or blurs around the face. A sloppy lip to voice synchronization can also tell you that the video is fake. Some deep fakes may also have dull shadows around the eyes and unrealistic facial hair. Like every technology, the deep fake can be used or abused. So while it can be of great use in the field of education, do wonders with artificial sets and graphics in film production, help with criminal forensics investigation and also enhance an artistic expression, the same technology, if in wrong hands, can and also with those who have ill intention can damage reputation. It can also be used to fabricate evidence in a case or to defraud the public and above all undermine trust in democratic institutions with fake content. Now the IT ministry has taken a serious view of the concerns regarding deep fakes and IT minister Ashwini Vaishnav will in the coming days meet social media platforms on the deep fake issue. 
IT Ministry has already issued notices to social media platforms, Meta and Google. The IT Minister has said that the tech giants will have to take more steps to tackle with defakes and has added that platforms will not have the safe harbor immunity clause if they fail to take sufficient measures to remove defakes. So where does the buck stop? Do we need more and perhaps stricter regulation? What technology companies need to do? And above all, how can we, the digital citizens, protect ourselves from this clear and growing danger? We also have Enes Napane, founder of Cyber Sathi, and also Jitin Jain joining us. Thank you both of you for joining us on this discussion. Ms. Napane, deep fake technology, I was looking at some of the things that they can do and clearly, you know, there can be voice skins, there can be voice clones of public figures. Yesterday, a BSP candidate in Telangana, uh, you know, there was this viral deep fake video of him saying things that he never said. So this can actually even have a political fallout, especially during election seasons. But tell us, of the extent of the danger that AI influenced digital media can pose. See, when we talk about uh, celebrities falling prey to uh, deep fakes or to, uh, you know, be it uh, movie stars or politicians, we think it's somebody else's problem, not our problem. But unfortunately, deep fakes are not new in India. It has already been used several times to commit crimes against individuals. So, for example, in one case, a person is, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, A reaches out to B for a certain amount of money and then he says, no, I don't trust it's you, it could be somebody else. So, this is a person who is being very cautious, you know, that he may be scammed and yet he was scammed using deep fix because he insists that I have to see you before I accept that this is you and I will then transfer the money. So the uh, B comes online and, uh, you know, uh, shows himself visually and thereafter money is transferred and then it transpires that what was shown as the visual was a deep fake. So when we look at and similarly, there is another case of a lady being uh, scammed through a voice fair deep fake call where she thought her nephew was speaking to her and asking her for money. And after she transferred it and then found out that it wasn't her nephew who had spoken to her. So when you look at cases like this, you realize deep fake is here to touch each of our lives on a daily basis. You and I could fall victim. So it's really important for us to know and be aware and be a lot more cautious than what we have been so far. Right. Uh, Mr. Chen, you know, with the advancement of technology, how hard has it become to detect deep fakes? Because like Ms. Napine was also saying that, you know, there are uh, people committing financial frauds, but also looking at how it affects adolescents because uh, celebrity porn videos and also porn videos, deep fake porn videos are creating a lot of problems for uh, children studying in high school and colleges. So uh, can you also tell us uh, with the advancement of technology, how difficult is it getting to detect, get, how difficult is it to detect what is a deep fake, deep fake and what is actually not. No, I mean, we saw in the Maria's capsule, she pointed out three, four pointers where you could like spot for unusual eye movements, un unusual skin tone, unusual patterns, unusual movements of a person. Uh, but you see, all these things can be a factor to de detect a deep fake if the video which is generated using a deep fake technology is a first generation deep learning model where a technology was not too perfect and, you know, humans. Uh, uh, to an extent of four to five percent chance, there would be a possibility that you might be able to spot whether a video is edited or a machine generated one. Now, but if somebody is using a, a second generation deep learning models to create a deep fake video, I mean, understand it's a dangerous mix of machine uh, learning and artificial intelligence, where two AIs are competing against each other till the one which is making it and one which is spotting a fault in it, uh, uh, you know, uh, comes down equally till the times all the faults find by the second AI become zero. The AI, which is generating a deep fake, keeps improving the, uh, you know, the video. So today, if a video is created using a second generation uh, deep fake deep learning model, uh, for a humans, it is not possible to spot a video by a simple human eye. Even by, you know, using normal uh, video forensics tools, it is not possible. So I think the deep fake detection technology is yet to come off stage. Companies like Google uh, uh, and Meta have invested in uh, detecting deepfakes. We partnered with Google almost four years ago. But those models are still, you know, sort of collection models where a library of deepfakes have been created to inform the public. But it, any technology to create, uh, you know, detect a deepfake in real time is yet to come.
I mean, yes, if there is a you know first generation uh, face swapping or you know the face mixing or deep fake has been created, you might be able to spot it using the existing technology. But the second generation models are almost next to impossible to detect right now in real time. So that technology is yet to come. Second, uh, the issue you pointed out of uh, you know this uh, porn videos of celebrities. See, it's a problem which has existed almost for four years. It's a multi-billion-dollar industry today across the globe. So there is no celebrity I can say that in India or abroad. Whose defect one has not been created. So it is an issue where we have to take very stern action and very timely action. And for that, I think a, 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 a change in the IT rules or a new legislation is needed to deal with this problem, where the victims can have immediate relief instead of going through this defamation suits, FIRs, or IT rule notices. I think you have to have some mechanism where a victim can get an immediate remedy or immediate relief from this problem. Right. If a defect is spotted. Right, that's, that's a very important point. I'll just come to that in a bit. But tell me how, uh, Ms. Napine, how are countries dealing with this? Because you know there are states like California and Texas which have passed laws that criminalize the publishing and distribution of uh, deep fakes. But all of that, I think, was in the context of election outcomes. Now we also have states like Virginia which have imposed criminal penalties, and then we have China which is doing certain things. But China is a different context altogether. So how are countries dealing with this? Do we have um, a good practice? Uh, example that we can sort of copy or sort of emulate. Uh, we do have a most recent one, which is the European Union's uh, AI Act, which is going more on the risk-based uh, categorization. So what it has given is three categories of risks. The first level, where it says AI cannot be used for certain kinds of purposes, and that would include hate speech and fake news, etc. So you would have the second level. You could have generative AI technically falling part of the second level, where they identify it as a threat, but where the threat can be resolved. So one of the methodologies, which is a very balanced way of looking at it, is to have a, a transparency report or a kind of declaration when somebody is creating and publishing or transmitting a deep fake video to specifically say that this is created out of deep fake technology. So when you do that, then if for instance, if you're creating a parody or satire, a meme, for instance, you can do that, but then you will have to specifically say this is a fabricated document, that it is not real, it is not original. So when you do that, then there is disclosure to the public who is seeing it. It does not mean that you can then create porn videos. It merely means that within what is permissible, if you're creating something, then that at least will still carry that clear delineation that it is not me, it is something that was fabricated. Now, here is something we could possibly emulate and law could play a very clear hand in terms of uh, curbing the abuse of uh, AI technology, be it in deep fakes or otherwise. Right. President, how have companies dealt with this? I know you just touched upon this, but there was this code of practice that was signed in 2018 and companies like Facebook and Google and Twitter were also part of it. But uh, clearly there were also the assessment of the code revealed that there were gaps there. So how are companies dealing with it? Is it just a set of guidelines, advisories and no, do they show any intent uh, to deal with this matter? No, that code of ethics was signed voluntarily by these companies with the election commission that is applicable only during the model code of conduct is taking place. It is related to elections. So idea was that if election commission uh, flags on certain content as illegal or misinformation or whatever, then these companies have to take it down within 36 to 48 hours. Idea was there were a lot of cases pending with these companies and they were not acting for months and months. So at least during the election, so that election integrity is main maintained, they were asked to take uh, you know immediate actions within 36 hours. Now here the problem is, see as Napinai was also mentioning, uh, see it's a good practice to have and I've been advocating that all machine generated videos which are used for advertisements, news bulletins or political campaign should carry a label that this is a machine generated video. But that will only solve the problem partially because what will happen then if, if a, uh, you know, uh, 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 the person creates a deep fake video for sinister purposes and circulates it then the people will know oh, this video does not have a, a defect label, so it is real. So you are in a way also white labeling the other fake videos just because they don't carry a label. So it's a good practice to have. It's like, you know, the, the drug trade is banned in India. So people who are compliant by law, who are good people in the society, they'll always follow the law. But 
it is a mischief mongers and this um, the, you know criminal elements who do not follow the law and they do it anyways so the problem here is that these laws uh, effectively will have no enforcement over these criminal elements and they will still continue to use the technology for political purposes manipulating electoral campaigns you know harming reputations so you have to understand how do you then enforce this law how do you then have uh, remedial uh, actions how do you have stringent penalties as a deterrence uh, for the people now so this is what i think what you have to do is that you have to have a three prong approach one is to have a law in place with the rules and regulations two you also have to have a very strong mechanism to enforcing that law third uh, how do you deal then with the elements who are not going to follow the law and that is going to be a million dollar question and for that i believe that you know a, a part of this profit of these companies which are making out of indian uh, market have to be invested in this technology both for research and uh, remedial actions right miss uh, napine would you also agree that the existing law may not be completely poised to handle the danger of uh, deep fakes because you know uh, we know that intermediaries are mandated to remove content such content within 24 hours of receiving a complaint and then you also keep hearing of defamation law cyber copyright violation then also cyber felonies so is more law the answer to this well i'll say yes and no because you know i i know that sounds like a typical lawyer answer but it's the reality because you know the first question that you asked was are the existing laws sufficient certainly no we would particularly we would need laws which are specific to ai and which will regulate the use of ai and what is permissible and impermissible having said that do you have to wait for new laws to come to regulate uh, ai not really existing laws can also be applied to deal with these kind of emerging threats which is why i said yes and no there and finally i think the real message i would want everyone to take away and jitin emphasized it repeatedly and i would also add to that emphasis is it doesn't help us by just adding more laws even the laws which are there are not really we are not able to enforce it efficiently we are not able to enforce it sufficiently also so if you are going to bring in new laws it is not just enough to bring in new provisions but it has to be implemented and implemented effectively and in a timely manner only then can we really claim that we have victim centric laws right Basu, thank you mr napinay and uh, mr jain you want to say take few seconds yes yes please let's take an example see there is going to be a different dimension to this problem altogether you are going to even label the truth as you know a fiction let's say for example ndtv were to carry out a bona fide verified video of a politician accepting a bribe during the election season of course it's a crime and people must know so that they should not vote for that candidate but the moment you put out this video now now that that candidate will get up and say oh it's a deep fake yes. and please take it down within 36 hours now what do you do the platforms are duty bound you are in trouble if you don't comply and there is no arbitrator or regulator which can define whether it is a deep fake or not who gives that proof or certification whether a video is real or a deep fake right. so that is going to be a million dollar problem where the bona fide truths also will be labeled as fake and fiction right thank you mr jain thank you ms napine for joining us uh, on this discussion uh, on the dangers of deep fakes and the ways to counter them